Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Doodle Robot and today I'm going to cover with you a little bit about how I'm making this uh, May the Force Be With You Baby Yoda page in Joanna Basford's World of Flowers. Uh, but on a bigger scale we're going to talk about some tips and tricks for altering your coloring book pages if you can't draw. So normally I pretty much just draw everything on. Sometimes I use a stencil here and there, but I generally just draw. However, on this particular, the Yoda page here, Baby Yoda, I've used a lot of the, the tricks and tips that, you know, we use in an art classroom for students who maybe can't draw as well as other students. So I'm going to cover some of those with you as well as some other tips. So we'll look at some other coloring books and some other alterations to, to, Give you lots of different options in perhaps altering your coloring books if you are interested. So tip number one is all about uh, kind of fixing mistakes. So right off the bat, you know, mistakes are kind of the mother of invention. Things that don't go right are the mother of invention. So uh, in Butterflies, Flights of Fancy by Marjorie Sarnot, this is the first coloring page I ever colored. Hopefully it's in frame there for you. And on my first page, I kind of made a big boo-boo here. I started, I was going to originally color the background in yellows and oranges as I did here. And then, I don't know, I got a wild hair and I decided, no, I'm going to do it blue. And I started coloring blue over here and I immediately knew that that was not going to make the focal point pop very well. So I stopped. <laughs> I pondered it for a while, and I'm like, well, you know, the whole time I was coloring, I was thinking that this is a tree that gave birth to butterflies, because, you know, there was this little area I didn't know what to do with, and I wanted it to be kind of like the butterfly colors, you know, to have a little bit of unity there. So I'm like, it gave birth to butterflies instead of leaves. So that was my theory. So on this planet where, you know, trees give birth to butterflies, I'm like, they could have they could have three orbs in the sky. I don't know if they're moons or planets or what they are, but so I just decided to find a big enough circle in my house, a cup or something, whatever I used, a cap maybe, and I just drew some circles there, and those were going to be the blue parts, and then the rest of it could still be, you know, make the fo focal point pop, could be yellows and oranges. So that was an alt a page alteration that was by accident, not design, uh, but Think of, think of create, if you make a mistake, think of creative solutions that you can do to kind of fix the mistake instead of scrapping maybe the whole, the whole paper. Doesn't always work, but sometimes, you know, happy accidents. All right, so tip number two is all about stencils, and this is going to be probably the most extensive, the most extensive one that we have. So, stencils. So I've got my got my box of stencils. Oh, I may need to raise you a little bit. That's going to cause a bit of glare. Sorry about that. This is just where I keep some of my stencils. I've got, I even have a cap here for circles. I, I This is like a big circle. Some of my stencils, like it's bigger than the stencil I have, so I've kept it. I just used it recently in, in the Joanna Basford book. Some of these stencils are like ancient. This is ancient, like from high school. I'm in my 50s, mid-50s. So some of these stencils have been around a while. These are some stencils that I just bought at Walmart. They're all kinds of different patterns. And the pattern stencils, you know, you can do the easy alteration, which I'm not really going to cover here, where people place the pattern down. And then they take, like, Distress Ink or Gel Crayon or something, and they just rub the... The pattern in there and that's great for backgrounds and stuff I'm not going to cover that here we're going to do uh, it's a little more drawing kind of kind of stuff that we're doing here today but that is one way and you've all seen that done probably a gazillion times I know I have on the coloring channels so that is one way to do it another way is to take all these stencils and just you know draw the thing in and color it as you normally would I do that a lot or I use paint a lot if you get the special, you know, the, the spray stick stuff, you could probably 
get the dabber and paint it on, although I don't have any of that spray stick stuff, so I usually just paint it on. All right, so as far as stencils go, I've used them mostly for mm, a few things, lettering, like most of the time I just trace them on, but I have used them a lot for lettering. So these are the stencils that I used. Oh, I have, have my whole cloud stencil thing going on here. I'm going to have to pause just one second to blow my nose. It decided to run the minute I started filming, so I'll be back in just a second. All right, we're back. We're back. Sorry about that. Oh, I jiggled the camera. Sorry. Okay, so we have some cloud stencils here that, again, you can use, you know, when doing your backgrounds, or I could trace them on and color them. I just made them myself, all different kind of sizes and shapes. But for Baby Yoda here, for this part, and I'll show you how I got that arc a little bit later, I used the peel-off stencils here, although I have... I don't have to use those kind. Those were the kind that I had that were just small enough. I have some various letter stencils. Hopefully you can see that. I can't see if you can see because my thingy's in the way. Um, yeah, you can kind of see. I have different sizes of stencils, all the way up to really huge from when I was doing big mural size works. And oftentimes I don't use the stencils as they are. However, in this case, I used them kind of mostly as they were. I just peeled them off. I put these on my, like on some fabric and get the lint on them because otherwise they're probably going to peel the paper up and just put them down, trace them, and then colored them in. Okay. I generally on stencils, where is my camera? Oh, there we go. Okay. Generally on stencils, there's like that little piece. I usually connect that so it looks less stencily. But there's another trick that I do with stencils when I'm altering pages. Like I don't necessarily want to want everything I do to look like a stencil. So I'm going to show you that trick right now. So oftentimes if I need letters somewhere on the page, I want to write some text or something, I will, first of all, of course you're going to draw your line, whatever it may be, you're going to draw a line so that you're, you know, your stencil is straight, be it an arc or a line or whatever, and I'll show you how I got that arc a little bit later. And then, you know, you're going to set your stencil there and trace it. But maybe you don't, sometimes you're just, a lot of times I'll just be using the stencil as my guide to make the whatever letter I want. And so I've drawn it there for you. Oh, I should probably zoom you in a little bit. Okay, so I've drawn it there for you. And then I will take, you know, I'll either connect it if I want, if I want it to be stencily like. I usually don't. Usually I want a little more artistic artistic flair to whatever I'm doing. So I may just use that as a guide to make, you know, whatever I'm going to do. Maybe I want to make it a little more exciting. I'll just go around it a little more creative in some fashion, whatever. Usually it's going to match whatever I'm doing on the page. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. So then it's just a guide and I'm going to erase that out. So maybe I'm going to do a you know, maybe I want to do bubble letters and I don't have a bubble stencil. So maybe I could do bubble letters. So then I've got the shape and I'm just using it as a guide. So often I do that trick. There's another trick. Let me push you up a second. That I did here for lettering. I did it on the Beatles page. I like this trick a lot. I utilize this one a lot. And it is going to require some drawing. And that is where the letters are going to match whatever lines you have on the paper. So let's say you have a lot of arc lines. Okay, 
that are you're usually drawing in some style or maybe it's drawn for you in some style but you want to add some lettering there so in this case I've got my arc here let's say this is a big flower on a page or something something like that maybe I want to put some letters in there or even designs and I don't want it to be too jarring from the rest of the picture so I've kind of got lines that go in this fashion so I'm going to make my letters and I've already got some an area here that I want to fill in with letters I'm just going to make those letters match whatever line is already there so let's say I'm doing a T okay and then here I'm going to have an, a line that matches there. All right, and then I don't have an eraser, so we're going to erase the rest of that out. But then you've got a T. And oftentimes you want to make you want to make your letters interesting. Maybe you don't want to make them. Maybe you do, but maybe you don't. You don't want to necessarily make them all the same size. I feel it's great to vary the size a little bit. So maybe there's going to be an H here. And maybe this time the H is going to arc in a different, in a different way. So here's the H. It's going to be a little bit smaller. Come around like that. And do something like that. So that's not quite a stencil, but it's kind of in the lettering vein. All right. So let's see. Other stencils, there's all kinds of, like for here, there's all kinds of shapes. I believe I used a diamond stencil on one of my shape stencils here to do the diamonds. Um, I just drew the strawberries and the little, and the lava, the lava blobs and the submarine. The submarine's just copied, I rifted off the album art there, so it's just copied from the album art. Um... So back to here. So there's lots of ways to use the stencils. Now, in Magical City, where I'm working on, and this still isn't done because um, I have a viewer request to show how I colored bricks in a certain book, and there's bricks here, so I'm going to use this one to, to do that viewer request on how to do book bricks. So here I did a different kind of stencil. So there's the kind that come made for you, which are awesome, but you can also make your own. So on this particular page in Sherlock here to make the wallpaper from like the modern day BBC Sherlock thing here, I made my own stencil and I did it the, the way we learned like in the third grade on how to make a heart stencil where I folded, I folded my paper Holding my paper, I drew my shape that was similar to the wallpaper pattern, and then I just cut it out. And then when you unfold it, you have you know instant stencil. And this was easy because I just drew lines down the page, and I drew lines going this way that that this would fit into, and so it was a grid. So I knew where I was going to place it on the paper. I also have. This was harder to make because it's very tiny. And this was just out of regular paper. I don't recommend you use regular paper. And this was here to do the other, the other shape there. Done the same exact way. What I recommend you use for making your own stencils, the perfect paper. Everybody should have this in their house. This is just a file folder, but it's got nice thick paper. I did when I made the stencils, I did not have a file folder that I could. Uh, sacrifice for that. I, I should bring some home from work, a couple folders, but they're all being used. So I just use paper, which is a little bit harder to trace around. If you have something with a little bit more body to it, it's going to be easier to trace around. If you don't have a file folder, another thing that will work really well is the very thin... This is just a pizza box. This is delicious pizza, by the way. The very thin food cardboard boxes. So they're very thin cardboard. So you can, you can, you know, draw on and cut out your own stencil. You can also take your stencils that you have. I know some of you have extensive stencils. You know, put it on there. Let's say I want to make this big gear shift thing here. Can you even see that? Oh, it's all white. 
Okay. I oh, will put it on the pizza. This big gear shift thing here. Trace that on there and cut it out. And then you have kind of an opposite version of whatever stencil you want to do. I should have used a better example. Let's say you wanted to make a snowflake stencil, but you don't want it negative like this. You want the positive version of that. You can trace that on and cut it out and have the positive version of the stencil. If you need a stencil like that. I really hope I didn't get crumbs all over everything. All right. So stencils are great. That's kind of a brief, a brief overview on different ways to use stencils. I'm going to pause here and get set up for the next little tip I'm going to give. So I'll be back in just a second. Okay. Uh, so what are we on? I think we're on number three. The third option is to collage on your work. If you can't draw, you could print out a line drawing of something that's the right size and cut it out and print it and then collage it on with Mod Podge. So for example, um, this is a page that I was practicing my brand new at the time Neo Color 2s in the background, so I wanted a big background space that I could practice that on. So I picked this picture that didn't have a lot of stuff in the background. However, in my opinion, there's too much background space there, but you know, I didn't want to interrupt coloring to draw stuff on there at the time, and I didn't even know what I was going to do then. I was just practicing Neo Color 2s. So later when I went back and I was, you know, coloring flowers and I was deciding how I want this page to go, I'm like, oh, well, you know, it's, it's paradise. What is this? This is Mermaids in Paradise by Denise Cleet. Um, I feel like, you know, in some paradise places there are tiki heads on pikes. And so I looked up tiki heads and I just drew these on printer paper and then I alcohol markered them. The same with the pikes, they are not actually attached to the head, those are separate pieces. But I drew all that, colored it, and then I just laid it on there, you know, did, did the way you normally Mod Podge things on there. So I have another example, and like I said, you, these I drew myself, but you could just find a tiki head, a line drawing of a tiki head or whatever your fish, whatever, whatever you're going to use, and you know, do it that way. So. Where I'm doing another one that's kind of like that is in, again, Magical City by Lizzie Mary Cullen on the Sherlock page. There are some alterations I made. I did the background with stencils. I drew on some more smoke with his address. We talked about that extensively in another video. And over here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to color paint on the... The smiley face from when Sherlock, you know, spray paints a smiley face on his living room wall. And up here in the corner, I'm going to have the image I am Sherlocked from the phone from the Irene Adler episode. We talked about that. I had actually, the first one I printed out was way too big, which I don't know where that one went. We are missing, missing, a, missing one. So the first one I printed out was actually way too big. So then I printed out this one and I colored it as it's colored sort of in the show. Although I did take some artistic license and color this part, which is white in the TV show. I colored yellow and it's going to go here somewhere. It's going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to Mod Podge that on, collage it on. I'm doing it yellow because over here I know is going to be a yellow smiley face. So I want to have some balance between my colors there. Although, I don't know. That one may be too big. I may go with the smaller version here that I've printed out again. So I've printed this out like three or four times now to get the right size. But that is an example of an alteration that just comes by. I'm not going to draw that whole thing. That seems like too much trouble. It's just easier to Mod Podge it on there. Whereas I look forward to painting on the smiley face. That'll be a fun challenge to make acrylic paint look like it was spray painted on there. So I should have, I should have fun doing that. So that is another way that you can alter a page by just collaging something on there. And let's see. Okay, so for number four, 
and this is specifically how I did uh, this one. Actually, we'll come back to that. The new number four is going to be the Star Trek symbol I did here. And that, again, is kind of like number one, where you're kind of making a mistake into a positive. Here, although I had to draw the, the Star Trek symbol here, for the outlines, this circle around here, like this part is the Star Trek symbol. This stuff is added, other stuff. Uh, and this is also. So I'm taking my cues of what I'm doing from the actual picture that's already there. So yes, in the Star Trek symbol, there's this line here. There's some kind of emblem in the center. It's not quite like that. It's similar. And then there's a circle around here. And that's all there is to the, the emblem of the Star Trek symbol. So this is, this is just a line like this line here. However, here, I was tempted to do a line and just blot out what was in my way and just have the line go over it. But then I'm like, no, I want to work with the page. I, I want to maintain the integrity. This is world of flowers. So I want the flowers and leaves to show here. So I just decided to make it round, but to make it the shape of what was already there. So basically, I'm just coloring a circle-like shape here line in using in the negative space thus leaving the positive space stuff there again same out here i'm just going around and i just kind of freehanded it there it's not all the same it's not perfect or anything uh, but there was already kind of a circle there so i just had to draw an, draw an arc line there and just work with what was already there now these i drew on myself these are just different symbols we've got the end and this was a design that was created just from different Star Trek symbols that, I'm sorry, I didn't know. I had to look them up. I'm not that nerdy. I wish I was, but I'm not, I don't have that kind of time. So we've got the Andorian symbol here, the Romulan symbol here, the Vulcan symbol, and the Klingon symbol. And I just lumped them all together to kind of make that like little point, fill up that awkward negative space in the corners. Okay, so thus making a design. And here... Uh, again, I utilized what was already there. There is a symbol like this in the Star Trek symbol. It's not quite like this, but I wanted, you know, it's World of Flowers, so I wanted to stick to the flower theme. So I just kind of made it around the center flower, made some extra leaves stick out there, and just left it showing. So, another way to alter things, and no heavy, I mean, the Star Trek symbol, but there was no heavy drawing. I just utilized elements on the page to make similar type elements, not out here, but in here, that that were close to what I wanted to, you know, the feeling I wanted to evoke. So that's a thing you can use. And that way you're using elements that are already on the page. You don't necessarily have to draw anything. Like I didn't have to draw a circle here. I just kind of pecked it out of what was already there. Joanna already drew the circle for me. I just made it all kind of wiggly. All right, so... The Yoda page, Baby Yoda. All right, now this page was particularly problematic. I'll tell you why in just a second. I was, I drew on some things. I think I had some lightsabers and I was doing kind of Baby Yoda with his little fingers like he's poking his head up here. And I was gonna have May the Force be with you kind of underneath the lightsabers in between Baby Yoda's head, but uh, it was going terribly. Like the drawing wasn't working at all. Let me show you why it wasn't working at all. <laughs> All right, now, if I were still 14, this would probably work. But when I drew on here, you can see, or maybe you can't. You can't, it's hard to even see that line. Okay, can't really see that line. So I was drawing, and I couldn't see what I was doing, which was making it super hard to do this picture. <laughs> so I erased it. I think I started drawing something else. I erased it. It just was not going well. I just couldn't see well enough to, to do what I needed to do. So I was thinking about things. I was thinking about things. You know, I'm like, how am I going to tackle this page? You know, it's like, this is not a page I would ever do because of this design on here. But I still want to, you know... Someday I envision myself like doing a whole book, and it might be this book, it might be Magical Jungle, it might be, you know, uh, I want to do a whole Johanna Basford book at some point, in addition to other books. It's not going to happen in the near future, it's going to take a long time. But in order to do pages like this that I w normally wouldn't want to color, 
I have to figure out what I'm going to do on top of it to make that work for myself. So here I knew, you know, there was going to be like probably a lot of green. And that made me think of Baby Yoda. Plus, you know, there's that Baby Yoda book going around. So Baby Yoda was on my mind. Plus, Star Wars Day was coming, so I had to get ready for that. So Baby Yoda it was going to be. And so, you know, I, the, the drawings I did didn't work out. I had to come up with something. So I was thinking, okay. I walked over to my uh, the other art teacher, and I saw one of her students using the light box. And it made me think. It's like, oh, okay. I could, I could trace something on there. Now, we can't use a light box in a coloring book because on the other side of the coloring book, is an image that's going to get in the way if you try to, you know, hold, and you'd have to rip it out of the book probably. So we can't put something back here and trace it. That's not going to work. So what we have to do, hold on one second. You don't see this a lot in, in modern day, but in my day in high school, this is the trick that we used. So I printed out... I printed out an image of Baby Yoda that I found online, and this is by, I should give credit to them, I couldn't, I couldn't click on the link because I was at school and there's filters, and I can't tell if that's, I think it's a Q, Q Vista, so that must be who drew that, hopefully. Not a very good job I'm doing of giving credit to whoever drew this little picture. Um, it's either a Q or an A. I want to say a Q. But anyways, so I printed this out. I wasn't sure. I thought I was printing out different sizes. It turns out these sizes are exactly the same. This one was printed out on the paper this way, so it got the whole ears in there. All right, and because I couldn't see, I was tempted to order some carbon paper online. I even looked up carbon paper, uh, but it would have been the same problem because the carbon paper is basically, you know, it's graphite colored, it's black. I still wouldn't be able to see it. So thought about it, thought about it some more. And so in the old days, we used to just take our pencil or a piece of charcoal, if you had an image you wanted to color, you know, from a magazine or something. And we would just make sure that we colored over wherever there was a line that we needed to trace our image over. And this was a big trick. Wait, okay, where did I draw that? So once you have it there, you can then just trace over the line and it leaves the imprint on your paper. Now, you can't do that with pencil because again, I'm going to run into the same problem of not being able to see. So I was sitting in my classroom, you know, watching people do clay. And then it dawned on me. It's like, ow. Oh, can I do it with Prismacolor? Will it work with Prism? I didn't actually use Prismacolor, although I tested it with Prismacolor. This is actually Brute Fooner. I didn't want to burn through my expensive Prismacolors for this. So, this is a Brute Fooner color. I had to get a drastically different color. And if you press hard with it, it will transfer. Oh, hopefully you can see that little red line there. That little red line right there. I'll move it over. All right, so that is how I got this picture on the paper. It was a lot of trial and error, and I had to dig back to high school for the, some of the tricks that we used back then. So uh, they do still sell carbon paper, which I'm glad to glad to know. You can buy it on Amazon. They also have another uh, thing that you can buy on Amazon as well people use it in sewing i don't remember what it was called but it came in colors like blue yellow you know for fabrics that's certain colors that maybe graphite wouldn't show up on it's like water dissolvable something or other i don't even know what it was because obviously i didn't get it i just you know hacked my way through it basically so that is how i got baby yoda on there all right so i will even show you we'll hold it up really close to the camera here in some areas, you can still see, I tried to erase the little red lines, but you can still see hints of little red lines here and there. So, that's how Baby Yoda got on there. And I cut, I cut it so that I could 
you know, get him exactly centered where I wanted him on the page. So I just cut, cut it off there. And then I knew I wanted to write, may the force be with you on here. So I left, I left room for that. All right. So if you can't draw, you've got some of the, some of the best tips there. Now, the last tip we're going to talk about is how I got this arc. And like I said, that was just with stencils. That's just stencil letters on there. Not even anything fancy with the stencils. But here's how you can get the arc on there. So we need to draw an arc. Oh, where's my arc? All right, so I've got, I've got, we're going to simulate the baby Yoda pod thing here. So we've got this. This is another ancient stencil that I have from high school, I think. All right, so this is the pod that, you know, Yoda's setting in here. Happy little Yoda there. All right, how do you get, and I wanted to mimic that line out there, so I don't have anything bigger than that to use that's the same shape, so how do you get that same shape? It's an easy little hack. I just need to find a ruler. All right, so you determine, I'm going to zoom you in here a little bit so you can see what we're doing. All right, so to you got to determine how far away you want it from whatever you're doing. So let's say half of an inch. I'm going to put on my different glasses here. So you just measure. You put it at half of an inch. Make a mark. Move it a little bit. Make another mark. Move it a little bit. Now, depending on how good of a drawer you are, you can make your marks farther or closer together. Make another mark make another mark this is what it's going to make it consistent if you're not a perfectionist like i am you could just you know freehand it and have it be wonky maybe that's your style okay so all the way around like that and then you're just going to connect all you don't have to be a good drawer or anything you just have to connect the dots basically it's like a dot to dot so that is how i got that that nice arc around the pod and then I just use the stencils. Now for the stencils, I'm going to move you back up here a bit. For the stencils you do have to kind of count your letters a little bit. Another tip here. So I counted you know one, two, three, space, that's a four, five, six, seven, eight for the space, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Over here one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's how I know that the E was going to be kind of right, right in the middle of Baby Yoda's head. So I could get, I have my letters and spaces so it would work out perfectly. That's how I lined that up. All right, so not a lot of drawing skill involved in the Baby Yoda page. That was just a lot of hacks, basically, <laughs> tricks. That nobody tells you about. All right, I think that's it on my tips and tricks for today. Hopefully this helps you. Maybe you have a page you want to alter and now you might have a way to go about it. If you have suggestions or questions about this video or maybe something you'd like to see, how did I do such and such, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, have a fabulous day. I'll see you next time. Live long and prosper. Bye-bye.